What is going on guys and welcome back to Touchdowns to Home Runs. My name is Bernie. Thank you for joining us today on the Touchdowns to Home Runs show, the March Madness edition. Hope that your day is going absolutely fantastic. Now the Michigan Wolverines did defeat the LSU Tigers yesterday at the time of me filming this video in order to move on to the Sweet 16. But the Big Ten as a whole has been really, really bad so far throughout this entire March Madness. We had nine teams play in either the first four or get into the main draw of the March Madness. And only now one team, the Michigan Wolverines, remain out of the final 16 teams. Now the Big Ten was regarded as the most competitive conference in all of college basketball. So what has gone wrong with the Big Ten teams so far in this year's tournament? We're going to take a look at each one of the Big Ten teams' losses so far and sort of just break it down and see if we can get to the bottom of what has sort of happened this year. Now we started with Michigan State losing the play-in game to the UCLA Bruins. It was a good game, went to overtime. But you look at Michigan State and they've been really inconsistent all year, which is really unlike Tom Izzo coach teams and the sort of Michigan State teams that we have seen from him in the past couple of years. Now when you look at Michigan State led by Aaron Henry, I think he is one of the players in college basketball that has the potential to take over a basketball game, but he's been inconsistent all year long, hasn't been able to figure it out. Um, Rocket Watts, you know, the list goes on. There are four or five players that are really, really talented. They're four or five players deep. Unfortunately, couldn't get the job done. They weren't solid defensively. They were not very consistent at all. Um, they were in a great three-point shooting team and ended up losing to UCLA, who's now actually progressing into the Sweet 16. Um, I think the big thing here for Michigan State and really throughout the whole year was losing Cassius Winston. Um, you know, didn't really replace the point guard, similar to how Michigan replaced the point guard. Um, you know, losing Xavier Simpson and replacing him with Mike Smith. I think that's what it comes down to for Michigan State. But yeah, they were the first Big Ten team to lose. Then we had the big one, Oral Roberts upsetting Ohio State. Obviously, Oral Roberts also into the Sweet 16 now, um, led by Max Asmus, Kevin O'Banner as well. Two phenomenal players, and Max Asmus, obviously, the number one scorer in all of Division I basketball. Ohio State had two problems, turning the ball over and really inconsistent, especially from three. Didn't shoot the three ball well, and you guessed it, turned the ball over a ton in this Oral Roberts game. Unfortunately, can't get the job done. EJ Liddell, Dwayne Washington Jr., played overall pretty solid in this game but especially Dwayne, Dwayne Washington Jr. not good down the stretch of this game that's what it came down to for Ohio State those two really main ideas um, then we had Purdue losing the first round to North Texas Purdue was a four seed lost in overtime to number 13 North Texas Purdue was a very underrated team, or so I thought, in the Big Ten. They were ranked number four in the Big Ten Conference Tournament, but really got no attention all year long. But they're a pretty solid team. For North Texas, though, they're really led by all seniors. I think like 80% of their minutes or something came from seniors. Um, but this is a game Purdue obviously should not have lost. Really, really disappointing. Um, but you look at them and... Yeah, I just, I, I don't know what to say. Um, Williams over there, Ivy over there, two fantastic players. They have some height with Zach Eady coming off the bench. Um, and they just didn't get the job done. It's really, really disappointing. Ohio State and Purdue to lose on the first day was so disappointing. Um, especially to me, I think it was definitely bracket busting. Um, Rutgers won their first day. They ended up losing after. The next team that we did have to lose was on Sunday, which was Illinois. Lost to Loyola Chicago. Obviously, Loyola Chicago is a fantastic team led by Crutwig over there. Fantastic defensive team, particularly. Um, but you look at Illinois, Kofi Coburn um, and DeSunmo over there. Two superstar players offensively and pretty solid defensively as well. But they really got locked down. They did not play fantastic at all. And this is a team that is really led by those two players and they could not get it going wisconsin after being so hot against in their first game against north carolina was the complete opposite in their game against baylor um now obviously baylor is a fantastic offensive team but wisconsin did not really look good baylor to be fair was very very hot making some tough shots they made it really tough for wisconsin wisconsin had a few shots to get back into the game though unfortunately could not get the job done they were eliminated as well rutgers was so close to beating Houston, ended up losing 63-60, to obviously led by Baker over there, their talented team, Ron Harper as well, um, and they should have beat Houston, period. They were up by like 10 points late in this game, 
and they let Houston crawl all the way back to take this one by three. And I think this is one of the most disappointing games for any of the Big Ten teams. Obviously, we had two Big Ten teams lose yesterday as well. We had number two Iowa Hawkeyes, obviously with Luca Garza over there, lost to Oregon. A lot of people picked Oregon to win this one, but you have Luca Garza. You have a ton of depth and especially experience other than just him. And Luca Garza played very well. Rest of the team did not. Iowa was very, 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 very bad defensively, allowing 95 points. Oregon shot very well. Um, and too much for Iowa, who put up 80 points and still lost by 15. So I think that speaks exactly where it was. I think a lot of people thought Iowa was probably the most overrated team in the Big Ten. Probably looks like that now. And then you got Alabama beating number 10, Maryland, by a score of 96-77. to 77. Now, Maryland, I did watch them in the Big Ten Conference Tournament. They're a pretty solid team. You look at Wiggins, Ayala over there particularly. Some really talented guards. Um, mainly, they also got some pretty talented forwards, but it's mainly guard play over there coming from Wiggins, who played pretty well. Rest of the team did not play well, especially defensively, um, but this is what's so impressive, particularly about Alabama, their ability to be good on both sides of the ball. Shackelford is just so fantastic. Quinterly is a great player, um, but it's really tough to beat Alabama on any team when you're this solid offensively and defensively on both sides of the basketball. Overall, what was the problem? Well, all of these teams are really well coached. Um, a lot of these teams just fell into some bad matchups. But overall, I do think that most of these teams were overrated. What I don't really like and what hasn't been really the key this year in March Madness tournaments is teams that are really led by one or two players and don't really have depth. Now, I thought that the Big Ten teams looked pretty depthy. Um, but that didn't seem like the case. You look at Purdue, you look at Iowa, you look at Illinois, and when you really look at the even like Maryland and, and Rutgers, all these teams really only have two players. Um, whether it's Desunmu, Coburn, you know, for Illinois, whether it was Harper for Rutgers, whether it was, you know, Wiggins for Maryland, it's really only one or two players. And that goes for essentially all eight of these teams, with the exception of, you know, Michigan, who would be that ninth team coming in from the Big Ten. Um, really unfortunate. Let me know your thoughts on the Big Ten and what you've seen from them so far in this March Madness down in the comment section below. Um, and let me know also, where do you think Michigan's going to be? Because if Michigan loses in the next round, you know, a conference that was supposed to have one or two teams potentially in the Final Four is going to have no teams potentially in the Elite Eight. So I want to hear your thoughts, your predictions down in the comment section below. If you did enjoy today's video, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to Touchdowns to Home Runs for more content just like this. We're going to be continuing to cover the March Madness for the rest of March and for the first week of April up until the National Championship game. But as always, guys, if you did make it to this point in the video, thank you so much for watching and hope to see you again next time.